lovely sound. Good. It's Kayla. What I meant to say earlier is your bedroom looks really beautiful. So um, it's nice to get these sort of glimpses. Good. So a few more times, let your head roll to the right and to the left. So you've got your palms over your eyes, Emma, and you're letting your head roll from side to side. And then eventually settle your head down in your centre. You could have a breath or two with your palms still over your eyes. It really depends whether that feels good right now. Or you could bring your hands onto your belly like that makes you happy because you're sitting there like this. And then some of you have already done a little bit of this, some of you haven't. You're going to bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor. Come to tilting your knees to the right and to the left. So when we do these really familiar movements, um, they work on a number of levels. So there's the sort of physical level. That as we tilt our knees from side to side, we're mobilizing the hip joints, we're mobilizing the rib cage a little bit, we're releasing things around the pelvis. But also just the familiarity is soothing. And, um, and particularly if we just keep it easy and don't push it. So we're going to be thinking today quite a lot about our feet. Um, just a couple more times, let your knees tilt from side to side. And then pause in the centre. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be picking one foot off the floor and folding your knee into your chest. And what you could do is use your trouser leg to help you lift the foot off the floor. Because then what you're going to be doing is dropping your foot back onto the floor. So you're just, yeah, you're just trying to let the foot sort of fall down onto the ground. So it comes down with a bit of a thud. You may be trying to sort of distinguish between stamping. So let the knee come into your chest. Oh, but keep the heel towards your bottom, Kim. That's it. So then let the knee come into the chest and then drop the foot onto the floor. That's it. Very nice. And just do that a few more times. see if you can that's it you're trying to let the movement be um yeah so stay keep stay with the same leg stay with the same leg and do it a couple more times and you're trying to let the leg go so you, if you can that's it you just let it fall good and then the next time that foot hits the floor leave it there and lengthen your other leg out on the ground i'm trying to avoid less words tonight <laughs> Um, maybe just roll the other leg a little bit, that's it. And then just check the foot you were dropping on the floor, check how it feels, uh, if the position feels good, because we're going to do that one, I think we did it last week, where you're pressing into that standing foot and you're letting your pelvis tilt towards the long leg. So yes, and so we did, we did do it last week, but we didn't do the foot dropping. So just do this a few times. And as you do this, send your knee forwards over your footprint. So rather than that, sit, rather than letting the knee wander over towards the long leg, just send your knee forwards over the foot. And it might be that you want to coordinate that pressing into your foot with exhaling. Just breathe in an easy and relaxed natural way through your nose and let your finger drop down. Okay, perhaps do this once more, that's nice. And then settle your pelvis on the floor and fold your other knee into your chest. So you're going to start letting this second foot now drop down onto the floor a few times. So fold the knee to your chest and then try to drop, that's nice, try to let the foot fall onto the floor. And you can experiment a little bit with, you know, maybe making it a little bit more stampy, maybe doing it a bit more gently. But your intention is to try to let the foot fall without, yeah, that's nice, without controlling the sense. Okay, let me just do this perhaps 
two or three more times. Okay. So the next time or time after you're going to leave your foot standing on the floor and you're going to lengthen your other leg out. And you can start by giving that leg a little bit of a roll on the ground. That's it. And then when you're ready, you can start by just checking that your standing foot is in a, in a position that feels good to press into it. And then you're going to start that movement. So pressing into your standing foot, letting your pelvis tilt towards the other side. That's it, good. So the standing foot side of the pelvis comes away from the floor. That's very nice. And the pelvis tilts towards the long leg side. You let your long leg roll on the floor. Very nice. So if we think about what's active here, what's active is that bent leg and that sort of pressing into the foot. You might coordinate that active movement, that pressing with your out breath. And as you breathe in and you stop pressing and your pelvis comes back to the ground. Let's do this a couple more times. That's it. And sending your, sending your knee forwards over your foot. And it might be when you finish on this side that you'd like, like to lengthen both legs on the ground for a moment. Just give the legs a little bit of a roll. And then from here, you're going to fold both knees into your chest. And you can have a little rock there if you like. But what we're going to be doing from here is letting both feet drop down onto the ground. And you're going to repeat this a few times. That's it. So good. Very nice. That's it. So a few times from the knees being folded into the chest, let the feet drop down onto the ground. Let's do that perhaps two or three more times. Let the feet drop down again. Now what I'd like you to do is, as your feet meet the ground, can you then let your pelvis come up? So it's like you almost go instantly into bridge pose. So as soon as your feet come down, let your pelvis come up. See if you can make those two things sort of part of the same movement, that's it, yeah. So it's not necessarily a particularly high bridge pose, but it's like, can we drop the feet? That's it, feet hit, hit the ground, pelvis comes up. And just repeat that a few times, very nice, good. that one more time if you like and then finish up with your knees folded in towards your chest. Okay. And just do a little bit of rocking around the back of your pelvis. That's good. And from here you're going to take your legs up towards the ceiling. You can give your legs a bit of a shake out. So just a couple of things. You can do a little bit of circling your ankles here. That's it. And you could also do a little bit, if you've got socks on, this probably won't be as helpful. You do a little bit of rubbing one foot on the other. So it's probably better if the feet are bare, just to sort of, yeah. It might be nice anyway, just a little bit of, yeah, rubbing one foot on the other. Good. Let's see, yeah. and then, then bring both feet back down to the ground. Now we're just going to do something that's slightly different. This is not feet for the moment. So if you bring your feet back to the ground, what I'd like you to do now is what's it like if you lift your pelvis a little bit, like a very mini bridge pose, and then let your pelvis drop on the floor. So if you lift your pelvis an inch or so off the ground and then try and let it fall down. So you're going to sink into your feet and then let the pelvis drop down. So if you don't take your pelvis too high, because if you take it high, then you're less likely to just let it drop with a bit of a thud. You sort of, yeah, you sort of, I'm just tapping the floor with your pelvis, that's it. And this one can actually be really nice for releasing tension around the pelvis. Obviously, if you don't think it's nice, then you don't do it. Yeah, yeah, so exactly, Rachel, you can sort of change the speed of this as well. 
So just do that. If you're liking that, do that a couple more times. Lifting the pelvis, dropping the pelvis. And then finally, let the pelvis settle on the ground and cross your arms over the chest. Good. And now come to letting your knees and your elbows and your head all rock to the right and then to the left. So that's it. You're rolling side to side across the back of your body. That's it. And again, this is one of those movements that can feel quite enjoyable. A few of these movements have felt enjoyable. Um, a bit like you're giving yourself a bit of a massage. So rocking from side to side. And then eventually let yourself, when you've done this a few more times, let yourself rock all the way over onto one side. And just have a few breaths there. And you don't have to keep your arms crossed, just be you know, make yourself comfy there. You might want to put your bottom arm under your head. You have a little bit of a foot there. And then from here, when you're ready, you're going to make your way over into cobbler pose. And at this point, I think it'd be good to remove socks because we're going to be doing a couple of sort of feet things. You won't know where the feet How is it with the video? So it was a couple of poses sitting, sorry. We've got people wanting to lie down here. So I don't blame you at all. So come in, yeah, come into couple of poses and sitting and lean back on your arms and just yeah, let yourself settle there. And then what we're going to do from here, and there are a few options, is so I quite like to do this one where you bring one foot on top of the other, but basically what you're going to be doing is taking opposite hand and foot. So I've got my left foot and my right hand. And you're going to thread your fingers. So your palm is facing the sole of your foot. And you're going to thread your fingers in between your toes. Now, if it's more helpful to lengthen out the other leg, you can do that. That's really up to you. Or you can keep, that's it. You can keep the other foot in cobbler pose. Good. So you threaded your fingers between your toes. You're going to give a bit of massage to the ball of your foot. That's good. Try and get all of the fingers between the toes, if you can. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> To your best ability and then if you keep leaning back on the other arm the one that's not threaded between the toes you can then lift your foot up and just swing the leg a little bit from side to side with your fingers in between your toes. so it's always the sort of thing i like where we're doing a bit of sort of multitasking here we're <laughs> releasing our toes and our hips we'll just do that a couple more times and then we'll do the same thing on the other side so Release your fingers from your toes. Give your legs a little bit of a lengthen out. That's it, yeah, you can bounce your knees. And then just decide whether you're going to come back into cobbler pose or you're going to keep, so the leg that you had your fingers threaded through that foot, that leg could stay long. And you're gonna have the other opposite pair of hand and feet hand and foot. So threading your fingers between your toes. <laughs> and then a bit of massaging the ball of your foot. So I was just thinking, you know, I keep things always sort of neatly short, happier. And obviously they help when we come in over into standing. They help with our balances. Yes, exactly, Jan. And then whenever you're ready with your leg, leaning back on the arm that you haven't got, you're not using to thread between your toes, swinging your leg from side to side. And sort of blurry, sort of blurry swinging good okay and then whenever you've had enough just release that again you could lengthen your legs out and then what i'd like you to do when you're giving your legs a little roll is just take your legs a bit wider apart you can carry on yes if you're happy so some of you may be happy to sit up some of you may want to lean back on your hands and you're going to do a little bit more work for the feet and ankles so by pointing your toes and pointing your heels Toes, point your heels. The other thing you could do, so if you're leaning on your arms, you can do this one hand at a time. So you can relax your legs and then just use your hand to sort of slap, it's probably sort of slapping the thighs out of it. Yeah, you might like to do it with your legs. 
and then you can swap arms and just sort of slap the leg out a little bit. And again, this is, yeah, use both hands. And so, yeah, this work, again works in lots of different levels. And from here, we will revisit cobbler pose in a moment. If, you, yeah, if you're happy in your, your sort of long leg, wide leg sitting pose, you can have another couple of breaths. And then we'll also come back into cobbler pose. In a moment we're going to come into we're going to come into some dog poses so you have another couple of breaths in cobbler pose and then when you're ready you're going to come over and you're going to do a sort of simple dog pose and just see how it feels so you can come on to hands and knees and when you're ready you can tuck your toes under you can exhale you can rock your hips back over See how it feels to arrive in dog pose. And just being very aware that the backs of the legs can feel tight. Just let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. And feel that you can bend one knee, you can bend the other, you can bend both knees. Often in dog pose, it's quite nice to sort of give it your knee, open the mouth. Talk about yawn, talk about it, let's yawn. Good, letting your head go, resting through your arms. So stay as long as you like in dog. You're going to come down into child pose from here for a few breaths. So it's really up to you how long you stay in this dog. And we're going to be doing a couple more dog poses. So hopefully you can need to push it. That dog is going to be a little bit creepy. So come into child pose and just let yourself settle down. See how child pose feels. And it's always interesting. I mean, sometimes I come to child pose and I think I could just stay there forever. And sometimes it's not so comfy. If child pose doesn't feel so good tonight, you can always be in the knee pose. Can you see if you can have another three or so cycles of breath? Just feeling the breath filling you, feeling the breath. In a moment, we're going to come and do another dog pose. We're going to, in this dog, we're going to do the little variation where you roll onto the top of one foot and then the other. And also from this dog, we'll go into a forward bend and down through a squat. So when you're ready, don't rush, you can come onto hands and knees. So you can make your way into your second dog pose. But obviously give yourself time to arrive in dog. And then once you've settled yourself, you're resting through your arms, you can explore what's it like to roll. Maybe I'll come onto the ball of one foot and then roll through the tips of the toes onto the top of the toes, just one foot at a time. That's it. So roll onto the very tops of the toes. So that's the sort of tip of the toes. And then can you roll all the way? Go even, what's it like if you were to roll to the top, very top of the toes? So that's, yes. All the toes. Yeah, you, well, you could do a little bit from side to side, but it's probably mainly the big toe, isn't it? And you're on to the top, the very sort of top side of the big toe. Good. And when you do that, then you're stretching out the front of your ankle a bit. You can roll from the tips of the toes right onto the top, the top of the, yeah, the upper, the, Top bit of the toes, I think it is. And then from this dog pose, maybe just have a sort of couple of quiet breaths in the dog. And then from this dog, whenever you're ready, you're going to start to walk your hands in towards your feet. You can come into on them from the <laughs> That's all right, that's fine. <laughs> Heading towards a handstand there. Up. So walk your hands in towards your feet. So you're in a forward bend. Just have a look at your feet and organize your feet. So they're a little distance apart, um, not too narrow, not too wide. You might like to bend your knees and rest your elbows on your thighs. Try to let your head go. That's it. I take your feet a bit wider, maybe, here, not too wide, yeah. And sink into your heels. Keep 
might be you have a couple of breaths with your arm, elbows resting on your thighs. It might be you see them. What's it like to release your arms to the ground? To let your head hang. Yes, exactly. In your own time, then start to bend your knees forwards over your feet. So you're coming down through a squat. And just, that's why it was good to take the feet wider apart because it makes the squat a bit easier. So down through a squat. It's fine if your heels come up. And then you're going to roll through the tops of the upper side of your feet, your toes, onto hands and knees. When you get to hands and knees, perhaps just give each leg a little leg out behind. One leg at a time. And then we're going to come into one more dog pose. And you can do your one legged dogs here if you like, if you're feeling, if you're not feeling lively, you don't need to do that. If you're feeling, you can alternate. So hands and knees, tucking both toes under, both lots of toes under, exhaling, rocking up into dog pose. And again, just give yourself time to establish in dog. And then when you're ready, you can see what's it like to lift one foot off the floor. And you could be sort of sneaking your leg back. That's it. It's quite nice to, good, to sort of roll the pelvis. You can, that's good, lovely. And just perhaps do this a couple of times to each side if you are doing your one leg dog. You can let your pelvis roll so it's sort of turning out to the side. So you lift the leg, stretch into the heel, very nice, good, opening the front of the body to the side. Beautiful, that's it. Really let the head go, rest through the arms. Again, when you come back down, have some couple of normal breaths in dog pose. You have your feet a little bit wider in dog, actually, Kim. That's it, yeah. That's it. And from dog pose, whenever you've had enough there, when you come back down to the ground, you're actually going to lie down onto your belly rather than child. So you might move through child onto your belly. It might be just make sure make your arms comfortable. So it could be arms down by your side. Or you could have one hand on top of the other and your cheek or your forehead resting on the back of your hand. And give your pelvis a little bit of a wiggle. And that's it. Just see if you can settle yourself down on your belly. Like some of you don't really look very comfy there. Um, for some of us, this is a really comfy place to be. We might sleep on our bellies. For others of us, it's less. Um, yeah, less comfortable. Just have another couple of bumps. In, let the breath in. And then maybe just think about because from here, what you're going to do is you're going to make your way back onto hands and knees. And it's not always the most comfortable place to come out of being on your belly. So hands and knees and back from hands and knees into a squat. So from hands and knees, you're going to tuck your toes under and you're going to let your knees come off the floor. And you're going to do a little bit of rocking here on the balls of your feet, that's it. And it's quite an interesting feeling to be in this little ball, so we're in this sort of curled up ball in the squats, which is very different from the feeling of being on the bed. And then from here, you're going to start to send your heels down to the ground and your sit bones up to the ceiling. So we come back into another forward bend. You can have a few breaths in this forward bend, that looks very nice for the feet. And then you're going to roll up into standing into your Good. Arriving up and standing. How, how are we doing temperature wise? I'm getting warmer. <laughs> Too warm? Alright at the moment. Okay, you've got, you've got, you've got some layers on. Make sure yeah. you put the head on. Okay, let's um in standing. Let's do this loose, easy swinging twist. Weird, blurry, yes, image. So let the pelvis move, let the feet move. If it gets too hot, or you know, just too stuffy, it's not fine. Good, so a few more times swinging your arms. So in standing, we're going to do a few more feet exercises, and we're going to look at a couple of standing balances that we did last week. I'm quite keen on this sort of familiarity at the moment. Okay. 
Okay, so, sorry, not, not everyone was muted. So from swinging your arms, um, come and settle down in standing. So just have your feet a little distance apart. And yeah, maybe just take a moment to settle in standing. So it could be a little bit of swaying from side to side. So close your eyes, feeling how it is to rock your weight over one leg and foot. So up straight. Yeah, just sort of shifting your weight from side to side. But thinking about making yourself more steady. And then if you open your eyes, you can just do a little bit of rocking your weight forwards and back along the length of your footprints. So you don't want to go too far with this one because you will feel that you're going to topple over or fall backwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to be bringing our weight into the balls of our feet. It's weird seeing myself in slow motion. Come up onto you. That's it. Come onto the balls of your feet. Then bring your heels back down. So just do this a few times. And if you two don't want to be looking at each other, you can just turn your face, <laughs> face away from each other. It appears we're doing balancing. Good. So, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Good. <laughs> Good. So, if you come up onto the balls of your feet and you feel steady, then see if you can stay there. And then you could float your arms up towards the ceiling and just sort of feel long and tall there, balancing on the balls of your feet with your arms up. Keeping your shoulders heavy, letting the breath come in, letting the breath go. Good. Very nice. We let another cycle of breath move through you. And then bring your heels down. And you're going to sweep your arms down and around into a forward bend. Ah, let your head go, let your arms go. I'm going to turn the heat off for a little bit, but I'll put it back on again. Good. So just have a couple of breaths in your forward bend and then sinking into your heels, rolling back up in the step. Good. And then we're going, we're going to do the same balance with this mudra, Hakini mudra. So Kim, you might just want to turn around for a moment to just see. So once we're up in the balance, we're going to touch the pads of the thumbs and fingers together. So I think all of you on Zoom know this one. I don't even know if I'm showing. Yeah, okay. If <laughs> I'm still. There we go. But what we'll do is we'll we'll come up with our arms just, we'll take our arms up and then when we take our arms up, we'll touch our fingers and thumbs together. So in your own time, bringing your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet and just settling there. And then you can let your arms float up. And then we have this interesting feeling of bringing, of connecting the hands without being able to see them. Touching the thumbs, touching the pads of the fingers. Having a breath or two with the arms over the head and then keeping the pads of the fingers and thumbs touching. Bring your hands in the mudra down in front of your chest. And I tend to have my elbows going out to the side. You don't have to. And then I always find this position is quite helpful for the balance. That's it. Very nice sound. The hands in Hakini mudra. And then come down, have a little straight out. Um, yes, this time, let's um, just come in onto the top of each foot in turn. So I've just rolled onto the top of my toes. That's it, a bit like we did in dog pose. If you need your fingers on the wall, which I do, do that on both sides. <laughs> this one is what makes me feel rather wobbly. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll come into another forward bend, and this time you can go down into a squat as well if you like. So feet a little distance apart, just letting yourself roll down into a forward bend, let your head go, let your arms go. So maybe a couple of options here. If you wanted to do the one where you sweep your arms around the fronts of your feet from side to side, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that one. And you can also, or as well, go down into a squat if you like. So the squat is nice if your lower back is feeling a bit tight this evening. Yeah, but it's good for, obviously it's really good for our ankles and our knees and our hips. And then when you've gone down into your squat, you can reverse that. So if your heels have come up, or if your heels are down, you just start to send the heels down more. 
and the sit bones up. So you come back into your forward bend, let your head go, and then sink into your heels, roll up into standing, letting the head So we're going to come back to um, just a little sort of foot exercise. So what you're going to do here is let one foot come forwards. You're right there, Rachel. You're okay. And you're going to start to let that foot tap. Sorry, I thought you were, you had lost something in my eyes. That's okay. I know there's probably something she's trodden something on the floor. So let your <laughs> foot tap. Up and down, and then they will foot tap in a bit of a semicircle. So I sometimes do this one, and you could do this one now. Let's let's just come onto the other side because sometimes it gets a bit achy in the front of the ankle. So if you bring your foot forwards a bit, it makes it slightly easier. And then if you have your hands on your pelvis, so as you tip tap your foot in and out, you're trying to not let the pelvis move because then we're moving in the hip joint. Good. Let's just come back and do this again on the first side. So bring that foot forwards, tap in, and then start to bring your tapping foot into a semicircle. So it does always feel like we're about to do some sort of toe down here. That's fine. Maybe that's part of the enjoyment of it. Okay, then come back onto the second side just for a bit of tapping. So the idea, like with all the sort of things we were doing on our backs at the beginning of class, is perhaps we just wake up all those, yeah, all that potential we have in our feet to be awake and lively, but aware. And we're going to take this now into some. We're going to take this now into tree pose. So you've got a choice. We did this last week, so you could choose to do like a mini tree with your foot on your ankle, or you could choose to take your foot a bit higher up your ankle, try and keep your pelvis facing forwards. And again, yes, if you want to turn to look away suddenly at the wall. So the first thing you could do is just a little bit of coming back to that swaying from side to side. And just choosing, is there a leg and foot that you feel a bit more steady, a bit more sort of confident about balancing on? And it's always good to try and start with the easier side. So shifting your weight onto that leg and foot. So just deciding what you're going to do with you know, how far up your stand, the inside of your standing leg, are you going to bring your raised foot? And you can start with your hands at prayer pose and do move to a wall with the sort of combination of, of um, the balance and the organised So you could start with your hands in prayer pose, and then you could also take your arms up if you like. And then I was thinking you could do the Hakini Mudra again that we did in the other balance. My balance here. So if you like, you could see what's it like to then touch your fingertips over your head, your fingertips and your thumbs over your head, and then you can bring the hands back down in front of your chest like we did in the other. And I tend to, when I'm doing this one, maybe not have my elbows so much out to the side. I don't my elbows drop in. Excuse me. Good. Have a little shake out before we do the other side. Shake out of arms and legs. And maybe just take a moment in standing so that we're not sort of rushing from one place to the next. So just take a moment to settle in standing. Perhaps look down at your feet. And then stop looking at your feet, keep closing your eyes. Just settling for a moment. If you like to do the swaying from side to side, you can do it. Letting your shoulders drop. Okay, so you can just experiment here with a little bit of rocking your weight onto your second leg of foot. And just seeing how that feels without committing yourself to the balance just yet. <coughs> And then when you're ready to come on into your tree pose on your second side, then obviously opening your eyes and just starting to think about, okay, where am I going to take my foot? 
somewhere onto the inside of my standing leg. Maybe the ankle, maybe the shin. Have the heel just above the knee. And you can try and bring your heel right up on the inside of your leg. And then the hands become to prayer pose at your breast. Breaths there, yes, you can let your arms go up. If and when you feel steady, let the shoulders fall down away from the ears. And then, if you like to do that Hakini Mudra again, touching the pads of your fingers and thumbs over your head for a breath or two, and then slowly bringing the hands down. Sorry about that. We, just, we were looking for him everywhere before the class started <laughs> to take him. But my daughter drew me so contrary, he'd obviously fallen off somewhere outside. Mm -hmm. Have you? <laughs> you did. Have a little shake out. We're going to come into very nice street poses. Sorry, we're just trying to deal with the temper of the cat. Um, we're going to come into a wide forward bend. So you need to turn so you're facing the long edge of your mat. And just like we did in sitting, take your legs wide. And you're going to sink into your heels. You're going to fold forwards. And just sort of when you arrive, see how it feels. You might be quite happy just releasing in the forward bend. If you feel that you want, would like to sort of bend one knee, bend the other, or sort of equally walk your hands over to one leg, one side and the other, you can do. So just a bit of, you know, what, what feels good for you in this forward bend. Very nice. And if you have been moving from side to side, it might be nice then just to have perhaps two or three or four quiet breaths, just releasing in the centre and really feel your heels rooting down into the ground. That's very nice. You can do any sort of palm arrangement you like. Heels rooting, that's it. Heels rooting into the ground, letting the head go. Yeah, that's why I like that little gentle rock. Just checking that you're still rooted through the outer edges of your feet. It's quite easy to lose those a bit. And then whenever you have enough, you can be sinking into your heels. <laughs> Making your way out without a shake. So what we're going to do now is just come to stand on our mat, facing the long edge of the mat. And you've got to, not facing the long edge, sorry, it's facing the short edge, facing the length of your mat. And you want to have a bit of space so that you can step forward. So you're going to step one foot forwards. And you're going to do this very familiar, just rocking forward and back. You, as much as possible, have both feet pointing forwards at this stage. You could look down at them briefly. And then don't look at them and just feel your feet on the floor. And just weight into the ball, so the ball of the back foot, the heel of the front foot. Just a couple more times forwards and back. That's it. And then we're going to settle down. 
And this is the point to see, can you settle down? Can you have both feet pointing forwards and the pelvis pointing forwards? And we're gonna swing our arms here, but try not to move below the waist. So just moving the shoulders, the ribs, that's it, the head could move, that's us. Good. Just how does this feel when we're swinging our arms, but we're not moving? And as we've done the last, I think, few weeks, we're going to then change it. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn towards our back leg and we're going to let our pelvis move. And if you let your pelvis move, you might then want to let your back foot turn out. So turning towards the back leg. So we're wanting to let the pelvis move and sort of open to the side. And we might then let the front foot turn. And it's possible here, then you just want to think, well, maybe I want my front foot a little bit further forward. It's not too, you know, we're going to be taking our weight onto our front foot. People will remember this one. So, you know, it's judging what's going to be a good place for that foot to be able to take my weight onto it. And then bring the arms up at shoulder height. Let the shoulders drop down and just feel very wide. So that's it, Kim. If you turn, if your arms should be sort of facing the length of your mat, good. But this foot needs to point forwards. Yeah, so this, this foot doesn't need to turn all the way out, but this foot does need to point forwards. And then from here, we're bending the front knee and we're just starting to transfer our weight onto our front foot. And then seeing what it's like to stay very wide across the front of the chest, but to tip forward. And it might be that your fingers come to the floor, or it might be that we. I do think with this one, if we if we assume that we're going to be wobbly, but anything else is a bonus, good. Good. You might want to try this a couple of times so you can come back up and come back to this sort of just be very wide across the front of your chest, front foot pointing forwards, back foot can turn out a little bit. Now, if I if I'm looking in this one, I'm sort of looking, I say forwards, I'm sort of looking where I'm facing. And yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I see what you're looking at. That's yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Looking, looking where the pelvis is facing. Looking at the pelvis. Good. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. Well done. Shake. Well as we get a little moment, <laughs> capture it as it captures you. So you have a little shake out, then we'll do the other side. So you're going to come back to feet being side by side. You're going to step your other foot forwards, and you're just going to come back to this sort of easy rocking your weight forwards and back. Look at both feet and just see at this point, can both feet face forwards on the floor and then stop looking? And just feel them. Feel the weight coming into the front heel, into the ball of the back foot. And then eventually settle both feet down. And then just like we did on the other side, just again have a look at your feet. So both feet facing forwards, the pelvis facing forwards, trying to leave the pelvis steady, which means it's not moving and we're swinging our arms. This little slightly strange feeling that, that from the waist up we're moving, from the waist down we're really planting. Okay. And then we can change it, we can start to turn towards the back leg and as soon as I start to put my pelvis turn towards my back leg, maybe my back foot wants to turn out. It doesn't have to turn out particularly far, but that just might make it feel more comfortable. So we want to end up in a place, and again, you can adjust your feet a little bit, where our pelvis is facing to the side. And then we bring our arms up to shoulder height. Our arms are also facing on the length of the mat. Let the shoulders soften. Let the front knee bend. So you're going to be bringing your weight into your front foot with that knee being bent to start with. But just how does it feel to start to transfer the weight into the front foot? Just tilting forwards, tilting forwards. We might come to a place where our sort of middle finger, a couple of fingers touch the floor. Let's equally, we might 
<laughs> and I think it is quite good all over. <laughs> yes. So it can be really varied from side to side, but I do think it's good to do it a couple of times because I often find maybe the, you know, I, I don't know, it's just if we're only doing it once, then a bit too much pressure. So a couple of times. I think there's a thing we're tipping forwards, but if we start to go too quickly, can we sort of recover? Can we slow down a little bit? Can we control that movement? And then if we do touch our fingertips on the floor, can we really stretch into our back heel and open the front of ourselves? Very nice. Fantastic. Do you think, do you think we're sort of, yes, the repetition is paying off, which we're sure you're okay with that walk. Let's just, yeah, let's just copy Sam and swing our arms and let all of that go. Well done. Good. So now, yes, let the pelvis move in this one, let the feet move. So feel the whole look good, feel the whole of yourself in movements. Easy, easy movement now. And then just before we come out of standing, we're going to settle in standing and we're going to bring our attention to our breathing. So settle down with your feet a little distance apart and bring one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your chest. I mean, you could, you know, have both hands on your belly, but I quite like that one hand on the belly or one hand on the chest. And just close your eyes and just let yourself settle. But it's helpful to sway a little bit from side to side, you can do. Just settle with your breathing. Let your shoulders soften. Let your jaw relax. And just see if you can feel your body responding to your breathing. So maybe you feel something happening in the belly. Maybe you feel something happening in the chest. Letting the breath come in. Take the same sort of quiet focus on our breathing um, into one last forward bend, dog pose and child pose. So come towards the backs of your mat. And yes, and there is an option. Just remember that when you go into your forward bend, if you want to go down into a squat, you can do, and then back up into a forward bend. So that might be quite nice to do. So we've done a few squats today. So roll into your forward bend and. Just see if you can find that sort of quiet breathing in your forward bend. Yes, you can go into your squat, absolutely. In your forward bend to your squat. And then from your squat, you can make your way back into your forward bend. Let's see if you can have a couple of quiet breaths there. Let the head go, let the arms go. And from your forward bend, so if you're in a squat, making your way back into a forward bend, and from your forward bend, and walking your hands forward into dog pose. And just seeing, can you be in a dog? That's sort of like quiet. You're feeling the breath coming in. You're feeling the breath coming in. And so from dog, have a few more breaths in dog from dog that you're going to be folding into each other. How does it feel to you to invite yourself to settle in child? Letting the head rest. So if you're still really happy in child and you feel very settled there, you might have to stay there a bit longer. 
from child pose, we're going to be coming back onto our belly. So if you know that being on your belly is a really comfortable place for you, you might want to come back sooner onto your belly. Again, if you know that child pose is So that's a good point, Emma, because we are making our way onto our backs. So from our belly, we're making our way onto our backs. So if you do feel you want to put something warm on our belly, you can do that. So come, come back onto your belly and make yourself as comfortable as possible with your arms. So you could have both arms down by, you could have one arm down by the side of your body. Maybe try that again. Get one arm down by the side of your body. And then bring the, turn your head away from your arm and rest on that's it. Yes, you can put your hand. Yeah, you could just have that arm by the side of your head. Give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. Just try to relax and relax your subtle as much as possible. And if you don't like the arms, the arms are okay to change too. And then the other thing I'd like you to do on your belly is the one where you bend your knees and take the soles of your feet to the ceiling. And just start to tilt your feet a little bit to the right and to the left. So if you're happy on your belly, you can do a little bit more tilt of your feet. And you can let your legs come back down onto the floor whenever you like. And also, whenever you like, you can roll onto your back. And you can just decide where you're going to put your head. Keep your head where it is so you can turn around on your back. And let yourself arrive on your back. Good. So yeah, just arrive on your back and you might like to bring your hands onto your belly and just give you a, a, a cycle or two of breath. The other thing you might like to do, yes, a bit of rolling of your head on your back on the floor is nice stretch. The other thing you might like to do is to bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor and come back to a little bit of tilting your knees. Do that a few more times. Do you want less light on your belly? Okay, then what, what we're going to do is we're going to come into a floor twist. So you can pause in the centre and then fold your knees into your chest. So perhaps just start with a little bit of rocking from side to side. And then I've got this thing where I like to then take my legs up to the ceiling. So we're going to do the floor twist when you're wrapping one arm around the back of your legs. So I like to take my legs up to the ceiling, wrap my arm around the back of them, and then let my knees fold back down towards the bottom. And then the other arm is going to come out on the floor at shoulder height. Good. So you're taking your knees down towards the floor on the supporting arm side. So that arm is going to sort of support your knees as they move down to the floor. Good. That's it, exactly. You can let your head roll. And if you like, if it's comfortable, once your knees are down on the floor, you can let your head roll towards the outstretched arm. And you can take your arm out from under your knees. So again, if your shoulder stays down on the ground, this is the outstretched arm shoulder, you can take your arm out and then just see if you can let yourself settle in this twist. So can you let your legs be heavy? Let your shoulder be heavy on your pelvic side. And just breathe there. 
find something for you. Mm -hmm. You're holding on that you could get relaxed a little bit more. So lift that hand. So at the centre of the foot arm. So lift hands relax. Would you maybe scrunch your hand to the ankle to fist? This is the outstretched arm. So could you scrunch that hand in to the fist and then next it to the hand? And can you let your breathing soften as well? body settle. If you have another two or three breaths with your legs on your side, whenever you're ready, you can bring your knees back to the center. Head come back to the center if you let your head roll. If you like, take your knee, legs up to the ceiling and then wrap your other arm around the back of your head. So the arm that was supporting the legs last time is going to remain outstretched on the floor at shoulder height. Just be curious. <laughs> Not your back. <laughs> Good. That's it. So let the knees travel down towards the floor on the other side, supporting them with your arm. Once the knees are down, if it's comfortable for your neck to let your head roll towards your outstretched arm, you can do. If it's comfortable to take your arm out from under your neck. Again, that's nice. Just plan your hand experience. What about your jaw? Can you check that there's space between your upper and your lower lips? And your tongue is relaxed. Feeling the breath flowing, feeling the breath flowing. Just noticing the breathing quieting, so you can become aware of perhaps any parts of your body where you could soften and relax a little bit more. Breath or two or three on this side of the twist. And we're going to roll back up into our hands. So we're going to finish with a little bit of our, our humming breath, which we did last evening. Rachel, do you like Blanche? Do you like less love? What about you? Blanket or less light? Less light. Less light. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. That's, no, that's fine. That's good. Lovely. So, yes, yeah, settle down on your back. Socks, blankets, all these things that we need. And Resting your hands in prayer. I thought we'd just do three, three or four cycles of our buzzing breath. Not our, buzz, not our buzzing breath, our humming breath. Well, at home, if you're at home, you can do whatever you like. We so just come in the humming in the back of our throat. That's and we settle. It's quite nice to have the hands resting on the front of the body. And just in a very relaxed and easy way, let a breath come in. Mm. When you reach the end of your humming breath and let another breath come in, we'll do another humming breath. Yeah. 
and let your breath come. One last breath. So breathe in. Aware of the contact of the back of your body and the ground. Okay. Breathe it out. Breath. Just keep counting. So be aware of the flow of your breath. Breathe it out. So thank you everyone, no rush, take your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's hope um, next week will be a bit less clunky on Zoom. So lots of love, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Kara. Have a good week. Uh, bye bye. 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 bye.